Hello, this is Mark Johnston, Superintendent of Shenandoah County Public Schools. I'm recording this video on Friday afternoon, May 29th, uh, 2020, at approximately 1.20 p.m. Um, I'm, I wanted to provide you some updates regarding uh, where things stand in the school division. Uh, this is really one of the first and what I hope to be several uh, videos that I'm able to share with you. Um, if you don't want to watch it, feel free to delete it. Um, but I'm going to try to share with you some important information, uh, again, regarding uh, the status of, this, of Shenandoah County Public Schools. Um, I want to start by saying that um, first and foremost through this uh, set of challenges we've had is always the uh, safety and health of our students and faculty. Um, every decision we're making is in regard to that concern and we want to make sure that we don't endanger anyone uh, in everything that we do uh, moving forward. I also want to let you know that there are a number of agencies and groups that advise us that we have to adhere to their guidance. Um, these would include, uh, of course, the governor's office, uh, emergency orders, the uh, Virginia Department of Education and direction from the state superintendent of public education, as well as uh, the Virginia Department of Health, which more locally, uh, that guidance comes through the Lord Fairfax Health uh, District, of which Shenandoah County is in the southern part of. Um, so I participate in a weekly uh, update from Valley Health every Thursday at 1230. Uh, members of my staff do as well, so that we're staying up to date and in tune with this local situation. Um, they also include state health department information as well. In addition, every Tuesday at 8.30 a.m., uh, participate in a web uh, conference virtual meeting with the state superintendent of public instruction, where we talk about issues and challenges with which we all grapple. As you might imagine, <clears throat> when those meetings first started, they focused on waivers to graduation credits, uh, locally awarded verified credits, grades, those kinds of things. Those, those discussions have shifted more into budget uh, discussions as well as planning for the reopening of school, uh, although no formal announcements have been made. Right now we're waiting, uh, hopefully within the next 10 days, maybe sooner, uh, clear guidance from the state regarding reopening timelines, precautions, and so on. Uh, to that end, we have a group that has been meeting representative of different uh, parts of the school division, parents, um, teachers, administrators, uh, central office staff, and so on. And really what we've been doing is just, just going through a series of what-if scenarios. And those scenarios, uh, we learn as we read about what other divisions are doing in Virginia, across the nation, as well as internationally as well. We see some things we like, we see some things that uh, we don't like too much. Um, so the scenarios typically are around, everything gets back to the way it was March 13th. <laughs> School's wide open, um, no physical distancing, um, and so on. Of course, we've learned a lot of uh, health and hygiene practices in, in this process. So. I know that we would keep many of those in place because those are just good practices anyway. Um, <clears throat> so um, so this is, that's one scenario. Uh, another scenario is that we remain as we are. Schools are not allowed to reopen. And so we've got to be prepared to uh, provide a vir education virtually to our students. Um, I don't think either of those two scenarios are the most likely. I think the most likely scenario is the third one that we're looking at and considering is what if we return, but then with uh, things like physical distancing in place or groups no larger than uh, currently that's 10 um, and so on. And, you know, you really, the thing that I want to stress to you is this, even the most simple things uh, can be quite complex log logistically. And just a good example would be our school buses. Uh, our largest buses are designed to carry 77 passengers. If we we're reopening school with physical distancing, we're not going to be able to put 77 passengers on a school bus. Uh, 
and that's typically three to a seat to hold 77. So, so again, you can just imagine that alone. So what would that entail um, in terms of how to transport students? Um, another uh, talk with our food service manager today and talking about, well, are we gonna be able to use our cafeterias? And if we have fewer students in school, we could physically distance them at tables. Um, or what if we have to serve our meals in our classrooms? Then the question becomes, how do you get the meals to the classrooms? Health department says those meals must be covered. And if every school in the nation is reopening or even across Virginia is reopening that same way, everybody's gonna be trying to get those same containers, <laughs> even just something uh, simple like that. So there's a lot of detail, a lot of considerations uh, to be made. So I wanna assure you that we are working on that. I also wanna assure you that in the next day or two, uh, not uh, probably no later than early next week, uh, we're creating an online <clears throat> venue, if you will, where any of you, anybody from our parent community to our students, to our faculty, to community members, anybody can ask us questions, can give us input, can make suggestions uh, for us, for our consideration. We want this to be a, a free flowing um, exchange of information and review. So we're not gonna hold back things. Um, we're gonna share with you what we're thinking about, what we uh, believe our realities to be, and we're gonna want you to help us uh, with this. So we'll send that information out when it's ready. Uh, it'll be a form online, because I, I believe that when you have information, it helps reduce anxiety and stress levels. Uh, some things you might not like. Um, I would say that I'd be the first one to say, anything other than just a wide reopening of school is not gonna be the best um, that anyone would choose. Um, However, if that's what we have, then we're going to make the very best of it. And uh, we've got a lot of committed, dedicated professionals, community members, interested parents, and our kids uh, who can give us help with that. Um, along those lines, I also wanted to let you know of some things that are a little more current and short term. Um, our meal program, which is delivering food at uh, our three middle schools between 11 and 1 uh, each day. That's going to continue through the end of June. We have applied to go through the end of July. Right now, we have not been granted that approval, but I can tell you that that will occur through the end of June. So families, um, please feel free to come in. Remember, the, the, the kids do not have to come with you. You can pick up meals for students uh, ages 3 through 19. Um, the only requirements are that they be students or people who are ages 3 through 19. Um, <clears throat> and then well, I, I did want to acknowledge our food service folks because last Thursday, um, the 21st of May, from the 21st of May to the 18th of March, our food services have served over 40,000 meals uh, through this crisis. And they're going to continue to do that. And by next week, uh, probably mid to late part of next week, we'll be at 50,000 meals. Um, so I just want to say hats off to them. They've had one day off since March 18th, and that was Memorial Day. And they're going to be going through June 30. So come in and, and get some get some breakfast and lunch uh, between 11 and 1. Uh, and then finally, um, there were a number of students who were in driver's education classes for the classroom part of instruction. Uh, and they were, when schools closed, they were missing about 10 hours of instruction. And that is a state mandate. So um, starting J June 8th, uh, those students who were in the uh, driver's education classroom part are going to uh, receive online instruction from their teachers um, to finish up those 10 hours. We still can't do behind the wheel because we don't have an alternative to that. And again, that's a state, one of those state requirements that we have to answer to. Um, but we will be able to finish up the classroom part. So you should be getting a notification from your principals about, about that or counselors. Um, finally, for high school students, uh, our summer school program has included a number of online courses in the past. So starting also June 8th, uh, we're going to give uh, our students the opportunity. Anybody who failed a class in grades uh, 9 through 12 um, will be able to make up that class through an online 
uh, resource. It's called Apex. And basically they complete a course. And then if it's an SOL course and they need to take an SOL test, uh, they'll be able to do so at the conclusion of that under safe um, hygienic conditions. So I know this is a lot uh, to share with you. I thought you might appreciate hearing from me personally rather than another email or another long letter. Um, you may notice my hair is a little more gray. Uh, it's a little longer, uh, but that's okay. Uh, I think we've all um, weathered a lot in the last uh, couple months. And so I want to thank you for everything. Um, look forward to getting that link um, so that you can start sharing information, asking questions. Uh, we're going to keep up with that because, again, I think uh, I think that's the wet, best way to make sure that uh, that you're feeling involved and that you know what's going on and that we can also uh, tap into your expertise as well uh, because that's going to be really important as we continue to come together as a community uh, to do the very best for our students in Shenandoah County. Thank you again and have a wonderful weekend.